lot of politeness coming. Two me loose in front of Lucky Hustler. Here's politeness driving home on the inside. Two me loose from politeness. Two me loose in front. They hit the line. Two me loose just held on and beat politeness. Photo third, rock sturdy or magic up. Probabil takes the lead from her old sparring partner, Fun Star. And Probabil will be Fun Star. He's got a great uh, affinity with Kiwi-bred horses, uh, including Probabil, and of course that's going to be Karen's mount when he heads towards the Cox Plate this weekend. Karen, thank you so much for joining us, and no doubt pretty exciting to partner up with Probabil again. Yeah, it is, Emily. She's um, in great order, and that last start, start Epsom win was fantastic, so uh, really looking forward to getting on her back on Saturday. How do you think she'll handle uh, the Valley? Yeah, I was, I was pleased to, um, sitting down in isolation, to watch her uh, have a spin around the valley with um, Patrick Payne on board. And um, she travelled down to, to uh, Melbourne only a few days prior, so she was just out there to have a cruisy look around. And, and she was on her right leads and, and doing everything right. So um, I was pretty pleased with that. And, um, yeah, uh, Ash and the team have, have been pleased with her since. So, you know, she's in great form. I really do feel that um, she's in the best possible uh form of her career and, um, and and she looks fantastic. She's lovely and big and strong and glowing in her coat. So um, I think she's in for a, a, a you know in for a, a great um, chance there on Saturday. There must have been a little fist pump when you saw that uh, barrier two. That's much better than what perhaps we've seen her drawn previously. Yeah, that's right. You know, wide gate in the uh, Epsom and uh, barrier two just gives us a few options. Um, you know, she can hope she hopefully she can begin as well as what she did. Uh, in the Epsom and, and then you've got um, options to, to sit close and handy if need be and, and all, all depending on the tempo. So um, there's a little bit of rain predicted for uh, Mooney Valley tomorrow, but um, I'd really love to, for that to stay away. Um, but, you know, the valley does handle its rain quite quite well. It, it does dry out and, and drain through. So uh, even if the track's a five or a six, I'm still confident that she can run well. Um, her only 2,000 metre run was in the Vinery Stakes where that was uh, quite a soft track that day and she was narrowly beaten in a really slowly run race. So 2,000 metres is no problems. It's, um, it's uh, a race that um, I think she can uh, go there and, and run really well, really well in. We saw her in the autumn as a three-year-old and um, she tended to get back in her races and just hit that flat spot. You, you rode her during that autumn campaign. But this time in, she just seems to have matured the way she can put herself closer and maybe she has that flat spot, but just not, not quite so pronounced. Would you say that was correct? Yeah, exactly right. Um, you know, she she she's she did used to have the habit of beginning a bit slowly, so it's imperative in these races to uh, begin sharply, which is what she's been doing. Um, you know, she's nice and bright and well in herself, and and as you said, she still has that little bit of a flat spot, but uh, she's so gritty and determined, and and um, and uh, you know, she's got a great engine underneath, under, you know, inside of her, so that enables her to um, you know withstand some solid sectionals and. All in all, it, um, it means that uh, if, it's a, if it's a solid test of a Cox Plate, then uh, I'm sure that she can be there battling hard at the end, um, given her characteristics. So uh, watching a few of the old replays uh, on the TV the other night, the Kiwis like to bob up with a Cox Plate winner. So uh, I'm hopeful that <laughs> Kiwis turn. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And we'd love to take the 100th one back to New Zealand. I read a couple of articles saying that uh, probably it might be the speed in the race. Is that the kind of tactics you're thinking or, or definitely to take a set? Um, I haven't spoken with um, Brendan and, and uh, Jamie yet and, and, um, and gone through it uh, uh, in deep detail, but I, I think that the three-year-old might go and lead. Um, mm -hmm. he, he went quite steady through the first furlong and then he stepped it up in the Caulfield Guineas and ran along at nice fractions in that. Um, you know, you think with the lightweight that he'd be close and handy. And I wouldn't be surprised if the Aidan O'Brien pair are very handy as well. So, And, and they don't usually like sit and sprint races, um, having been trained... The certain style that those guys train them and, uh, and, and, and the way they race over there. So it will be very interesting. I'll just have to be Johnny on the spot and, and um, you know, making sure I'm covering all bases depending on that tempo. But look, if I'm, if, if, if I'm traveling nicely and I'm in the first two or three, it wouldn't worry me at all. So yep. um, very important how the track's going to be racing. Obviously, it's um, race nine uh, on the second day of, of racing there at the Mooney Valley. So we're keeping a close eye on obviously how much rain and, and how the track's racing as well. You know uh, the rest of the field pretty well, obviously, being based over in Australia. What would you say was the hardest horse to beat in the Cox Plate this year? I was pretty taken by Arcadia Queen, I must admit. Um, she was dominant uh, the way she quickened and, 
and galloped by uh, Russian Camelot. Um, I, I really do feel that he's got a hard task from 15, just the way he's been over racing a bit. Mm. Uh, I'm not sure if that's going to suit him. But um, So I'd say that Arcadia Queen uh, and, and the two uh, Aidan O'Brien horses are uh, what, I, what I'd have down as the main danger. The other one is Fierce Impact. I think he's mm. been just a little bit forgotten about. Um, he's been running great races after his Group 1 win here um, in uh, Melbourne. He went up to Sydney and, and ran some great races in races that weren't really run to suit him. So uh, he's one that I've got plenty of respect for as well. Uh, Karen, obviously uh, jumping between states, going from New South Wales down to Victoria, there's a, a quarantine period. And how's that for you? Is it just five days, I understand? That's right, yeah. So I uh, drove down on Sunday and um, got five days now. So we get tested tomorrow morning and, and then hopefully all good to go for Friday's night meeting, the Manicato Stakes meeting. So it's been quite good. Uh, I've got a few fitness things here and um, and keeping busy. No kids to run around after, so uh, a bit of R&R after a busy weekend last weekend. Talking of the kids, they looked uh, elated to see you win another Everest and we must say congratulations for that. That must just be so surreal. Does it get old winning a big race like that? <laughs> No, never. It was uh, it was great to have the kids there. We um, I got a, a lot of enjoyment out of that. They they were uh, pretty excited and pumped up. And um, we actually weren't going to take them along. And Carmel Sires arranged for them to get tickets and come along, which was uh, which was great of her. And um, yeah, Kathy and myself really enjoyed that. It was a great day. Classic Legend was um, superb. What a horse! He's um, he's just a star. And you know, shame to see him go overseas. But unfortunately, mm. that's. Uh, the nature of the beast, given um, given you know he's owned by by Bon, who lives in Hong Kong, and I'm sure that he can uh, fly the flag uh, wherever he goes. That horse, he's a star. Well, Karen, thanks so much for catching up with us. Great to get your insight into the race, and uh, we'll be cheering you home here in New Zealand, and hoping probably can do the job for you. Great, thanks, Emily. Take care.